Yes, sir. We're officially back at it. This is Book Nice coming at you with the Marvel Legends fans, Channel fans, Choice, Rite Aid, CVS, Walmart, Walgreens, GameStop, Dollar Tree, Woolworth, Punisher, and the War Machine Armor Figure review. Let's do it. This ain't for no scalper. You a scalper? Then fuck out shit. This one for them real collectors. That's army building and posing figures. Marvel Legends, imports. Many may be out fucking with them. Hype beast we know about. You. Stay buying figs, don't know about it. And a quick look at the artwork on the side of the box. It is the same on both flaps. Let's get this bad boy open and see what's what. All right, here we go. Frank Castle, a.k.a. The Punisher, who is suited up in this old kind of makeshift kit-bashed war machine armor here. I jokingly uh, talked about where this figure originates from because I don't even know anymore. Some time ago, we were all depressed and upset about the scarcity of Marvel Legends and where to find them. And now they're everywhere and I don't know where things originate. I believe this is a fan's channel, a fan's choice exclusive, but this figure came from GameStop for sure. Shout out to my man Pendelos Murtos who hooked me up with this figure and uh, the uh, Punisher figure that I reviewed a couple days ago as well. So he's been looking out, hooking me up. So thank you, my brother. And uh, let's see if you can follow me here. I'm going to go ahead and read his bio real quick, and then I'll give you some, some history and some interesting tidbits about this armor and this uh, story that it originates from. His bio on the back of the package reads, After the fall of War Machine, Frank Castle acquires the highly weaponized armor and makes it his own. So a pretty cool, pretty interesting adaptation of Punisher here donning the War Machine armor. And I got to give it to Hasbro. This kind of came out of left, but... They've been doing a lot of figures based on accurate comic book stories and trying to keep the figures as accurate to their comic book counterpart as possible. So in 2016, in the Punisher's solo book from issues 218 to 228, uh, the Punisher was on a mission from Nick Fury. See if you could follow me here. And yeah, not white Nick Fury. We're talking about black Nick Fury, who's the son of white Nick Fury, but does not look mixed at all and looks exactly like the Ultimate Comics Nick Fury, who was based on Samuel Jackson. And then Samuel Jackson ended up being the MCU version of uh, Nick Fury, which is loosely based on the Ultimates version. It's all over the place. But Black Nick Fury put him on a mission to go to this fictional East European country to take down some sort of dictator. And um, he basically put him in position to get an old war machine armor. So in the first few issues of that run, he had an armor that looked very similar to, I'd say, the old Toy Biz armor. And uh, but the way it was drawn in some of those early issues, it looked like it was like a suit and not a suit of armor it looked like it was like material it was kind of funny but at a few points throughout that run with all the killing and crazy stuff he was doing i mean he racked up a lot of bodies and 11 issues of this comic book so who knows what punishes all-time uh kill uh count is but anyway so by the, by the last, I don't know, three or four issues of the comic book, it looked similar to how it looks right here. It looked very similar to, to this look. Uh, but, you know, the suit had broken down and been destroyed and he had to repair it and do this and that. And he also had to take down some like um, rogue ex shield agents who had Stark Tech and had some armors of their own. So some of those pieces from those armors were spliced together with the original armor that he first stole and that's kind of how it looked here. But armor kind of looked like the Age of Ultron armor. There is some accuracy to this and this particular armor in front of you is basically just the um, Captain America Civil War movie MCU Giant Man build a figure wave war machine armor just repainted uh, with the Punisher skull. It's pretty much the same accessories and everything. So the story was pretty cool. It was kind of, I think it could have been written better. It was a really good concept. It's worth a read, um, but there were definitely some portions and some parts of it that were just unbelievable and not really in a good way. And it, but he faced a lot of enemies and even some heroes, and it was a lot of appearances and those 11 issues. So I'd say definitely check it out. All right, I've been talking about that for a while. Let's go over his accessories. So out of the package, he comes with two hands that are semi-open and cupped. And obviously, I'm saying that he comes with these two hands because he has an additional set of hands. So let's see those. He's packed in with a set of fists. 
he's packed in with this 20, 22nd century baton, which is basically the same uh, accessory that you received with the uh, War Machine from the Civil War movie. Like I said, pretty much the same accessories for both here, but he did not utilize anything like this, so this wasn't part of the weaponry uh, from the comic run, so it's not something that you... Uh, well, not something I personally would display this particular figure with, but I mean, I guess it's cool to have. Honestly, I would have preferred to not have this and maybe have a set of open hands, um, like fully open with the fingers spread. So the two semi-cupped hands can be utilized to hold this. Uh, and he can hold it fine with either hand. And then he's packed in with a couple of more other accessories and doodads. I really don't even know how these things are supposed to plug in there. So this gun, it kind of alternated a few times in the artwork where he had a larger cannon here on this side. So you may want to actually kit bash this guy a little bit. But this seems to be the one thing that's working properly. He come, comes with two of these little things. I do not know where these things go, honestly. Um, and I don't know if these things stick in here or not. Like I said, I don't really care about these other things aside from the gun. And I really do want to get guns that look accurate to the comic book art. You can do what you want as far as these are concerned and figure it out for yourself, but I'm not figuring that shit out. All right, I lied. I guess I did kind of figure it out. So these things uh, can stick on his left and right arm, like where the forearm is. And these are articulated at that point, but you got to be careful because it will pop off at that little peg there. And this can move up and down and rotate. I'm not sure if this is correct, but it does fit in there. So I hope that's right. But taking a closer look at this deco, uh, like I said, it's the same armor as the MCU Giant Man Builder Figure Wave version. Uh, except they have the Punisher skull here. There's some other skulls here, which I don't know if I really remember seeing in the comic book. They might have taken some liberties with these little skulls here on the chest plate and on the uh, the thigh. Um, this, I believe, was here, this number in here. Um, but you can see some wear and tear. It did a good job as far as making it look weathered and making it look um, like it's been through something, you know? Um, and then there was some... Um, talk about the helmet and if the helmet was accurate to the comic book uh, people thought that he should have the skull on the helmet as well but that didn't happen in the comic book actually so this is is pretty accurate to the book um, only thing I see here maybe is that this black could have just been like jet black just a more blacker <laughs> but um, but other than that I think it looks pretty good again I can see some people really taken to this guy with a paintbrush and with some additional parts and really customizing it to look uh, just a bit more accurate to, to the book. Going over his articulation, I think this is where the figure leaves a bit to be desired in my opinion. I mean, I know it's supposed to be a guy in a suit of armor. Shouldn't be that agile, but I do feel like they could have uh, pushed this to the limit just a bit more. So the head can definitely pop off. Oh, and it should be noted too, one thing that should be noted is that Punisher and this run looked exactly like Punisher from the Netflix series. So he looked like Johnny Bernthal for whatever reason. So I'm gonna actually try to break out the Netflix Punisher and pop the head on there. And he did uh, remove his helmet plenty of times throughout the run. So you definitely can have a little fun with that. But you can see the head is on the ball joint. Now my gripe already with the head and neck articulation is that he doesn't look up uh, as far as I would like you know for a flying character that's something that you always want is for them to be able to look up really far and you know the articulation is there you can push the ball peg pretty far back and then just kind of half the head on there I guess for a flying pose but I would have liked that to be better um, but yeah I got the gun back up there but yeah you could turn left to right it is hindered all right let me take this stuff out the way it is hindered a little bit uh, by these flaps here on, on both of the shoulders but Again, you can turn left to right. He does have a little bit of pivot and you can move it back and forward. I think the head articulation could have been better though. These flaps are articulated slightly. You can move them up just a little bit, but you can get the shoulders up pretty far. I'm losing everything here. Let me just pull out everything. Uh, you would be able to do a full 360 if you didn't want to uh, risk breaking off these pegs. These could probably come out. I don't know. Uh, I don't think they have a, a peg, but anyway, upper bicep swivel. There is a double jointed elbow. You don't really get the full range, but it's pretty good. It's about 90 degrees. You do to get, get a swivel and a hinge on the wrist. This is another point of contention to me. I wish that uh, he could move 
forward a bit more or back a bit more you can turn him left to right he does move back and forward just a tad bit but it's not the greatest another point here at the hips so used to um sh figure arts with the drop down method i'm thinking that you'll be able to do that with the legends but you can't so there is some possibility that you may get some rub here when trying to articulate the legs you can't really get this tucked in like i would like well i guess you could all right so i do have it tucked in but you are going to stress the plastic when you do that so you got to be careful as far as that's concerned but you do get an upper thigh swivel there is a double jointed knee there is a slight hinge on the foot a slight pivot and there's rotation as well so not the greatest articulation but not the worst still better than most of the female figures that's for sure all right a couple quick size comparisons with other war machines of the past so on the far left is the iron man 2 war machine armor which was one of my favorites for for a long time i think this was in the iron man 2 line yeah i mean it was still marvel legends but it was uh, released under that imprint and uh, i was thinking maybe you could use some of the guns from him onto this newer version but the peg holes are not really the same the pegs don't really match up and on the right here is the age of ultron hulkbuster build a figure wave iron man uh war machine excuse me and like i said i think at some portions towards the end um the armor looked very similar to to that one and a little blast from the past here this is the toy biz um i think this was the galactus build a figure wave uh, war machine and i think in the early stages of the book the armor looked similar to this and let's never forget that under the mask here we've got legendary dave vonner all right and then i wanted to break out punisher because like i said they were drawing uh frank castle <laughs> to look exactly like johnny bernthal and um and i also wanted to match up uh, a person next to the armor so i do think this armor could have been bigger because it doesn't really look like there's a person inside of there or they're a small person um but i think that armor could have been just a little bit bigger and let's see if this works yeah that looks okay it doesn't pop on the peg but it sits on there and it sits okay so and that's an option as well that's the uh, I think that's the vintage wave head if I'm not mistaken and this is the Punisher that I just reviewed recently I think that looks pretty mean with the gray bandana it matches up pretty cool but again he didn't really look like this in the comic books but hey you can take your liberties and do what you want with your ACBA and if you wanted to have him with the camo under the helmet that looks good too all right, I got to get up out of here. Punisher rocking the War Machine armor. Definitely a cool character, cool concept, cool figure. I would recommend that you pick this guy up if you see him on the shelves in whatever store he's going to show up in. A lot of options here, a lot of fun factors. So really cool idea. I'm going to flesh this display out a bit more and probably tack this on to the end of main course. And I uh, just want to give everybody a friendly reminder that today, October 1st, 2019, is the first day of October. Uh, it's an ACBA event where we have a different theme for every day of the month. The trailer just went live on my channel before this video dropped, so check that out. All of the information is in the description of that video, plus uh, it'll be posted across all of our social media. Also, ACBA Cutouts uh, Mercenary Discounted Pack is on sale now. ACBA Flight Stands will be on sale or on pre-order by the end of the week. All right. So as always, rate, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, peace. Crispy.